um, if you're an artist or a, or a you know painter presenting your works of art for people to see, um, if you're a poet, if you're a philosopher, if you're a singer, you know what it means uh, to be naked. You know? Then you understand nakedness. Bodily nakedness never really interested me. I can walk naked in front of anybody. It doesn't bother me. It's just... All you see is the, um, the surface, you know. Nakedness, uh, bodily nakedness, is nothing than seeing... Nothing more than seeing the surface of... of uh, the depths of the body, you know. Don't know what the whole... Um, all the excitement is about seeing boobs, you know, naked boobs and stuff like that. That it's meaningless, and <coughs> it's a pity it's like that because um, because of that, you know, everyone stops thinking. And um, actually, when I studied theology, I spoke with one of my lecturers one evening. I went to them; they invited me for supper, and I said to him. Why don't we have a theology of of sex, of sexuality? There is so much in sexuality that points us to God, you know. It's from Him He gave it to us. Why don't we... Why is there no theology of sexuality, you know, proper theology? I don't know if there's something like that nowadays. I haven't looked around, you know. But I have my own thoughts on that. And... <coughs> Because I've never had any qualms about naked bodies and stuff, I've looked at everything, you know. I've, I've looked around and see what people do with naked bodies. And um, this evening I was uh, thinking about this and, and it came to me, you know, that um, there's so much to learn out of the sexual union between a man and a woman that points us to our Heavenly Father and how the whole thing works. Um, if you... To put it simple, you know, if you don't open your legs, you can't get laid. That's how simple it is. If you don't open your legs, you cannot get laid. You know that um, in the Bible it's written that uh, on that day, Yahshua, the salvation of Yah, the Father in the flesh, said, on that day, they will come and say to me, look what I did here, look what I did in your name, look what I did there, and look at all the people I uh, saved for you, you know. And he will say, uh, sorry mate, I don't know you. I don't know you. I never knew you. I never had sexual intercourse with you. In a spiritual sense. You never let me in. You were never laid by me. You never gave yourself to me like a, like a woman gives herself to a man that she loves. I never came inside of you, you know. Um, if you if you take the pull, for instance, you you can't get pregnant. There's a lot of uh, symbolism, symbolism in that. If you swallow the pull of this world, you are immune against fertilization from God, then you can't get pregnant, then he cannot come inside of you, even, and even if he does, you know, it's, everything's dead and, and locked away. If he only comes on your eyes and your ears, you also don't get pregnant. You know, like you read, you look, you listen, to sermons, you know, it's like the cum is on your eyes, on your ears, on, on your hands, you know, you do all kinds of things. Um, y 
You cannot conceive if you don't give yourself. <laughs> you cannot get pregnant if you don't sleep with God. His seed cannot be sown in you to grow and be born at some time um, if you are not intimate with Him. And that is what he points us to in the union between uh, between a man and a woman, I believe. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, you know. If we open our our minds and we look at sexuality from from uh, from a spiritual angle, what it means and what is hidden in there is uh, when God says, "I want to be intimate with you." He says, where two or three are gathered, uh, I want to be intimate with you, because only in intimacy is uh, conception possible. So, yeah, that was just my thought uh, on that. 